Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where today we're going to be looking at one of the more popular genres on the Amiga, the horizontal shoot 'em up. And as you might imagine, there's quite the range of games. So let's look at some of the Amiga first or exclusive titles as we check out the Amiga's answer to our type. Starting with. That was released in 1989 and was developed by DMA Design, yes, those of Lemmings fame, with Psygnosis handling the publishing. But this wasn't their first shooter, that would have been Menace. But this, with its great music and fancy intro, tends to be the one that people remember. The game, for the time, looks amazing with detailed sprites and backgrounds, and lots of animation going on. They even boasted they had one megabyte of graphics. And it doesn't take too long for one of the more interesting mechanics of the game to show up, that the screen at set points will move up and down. You'll still have to keep shooting horizontally, so it is in keeping with the episode's theme, but it is something you'll have to keep an eye out for, as it will just suddenly happen. Oh, and by the way, if it looks like I'm cheating in any of these games, well, that's because I am. I'm not the biggest fan of shoot 'em ups, and as such, I'm not the best at them. So, this helps me show you more content, so hopefully, you'll forgive me. And there is lots of content to show in this game, as the levels are huge and there's four of them for you to tackle as well. But when it comes to the weapon, well, our starting off one is a little weedy. But the enemies will drop money when they die, blood money if you will, that you can then use to upgrade your firepower, which is done at these handy upgrade stations that you'll find dotted around the levels. So you can add angled shots to your main attack, or missiles that will fire behind you, or even get bombs that will rain down on those below. And on top of all that, you can also extend the ranges that they travel. The cache also has a secondary usage, as you'll need to buy your way into the various levels of the game, and each one has its own craft for you to pilot, which is quite cool. And if you die, well, you'll lose all your weapons, and death, well, it comes very easy in this game, and the amount of health you have is very limited. Now, one interesting thing to note is that the box art and title screen uses the same artwork as a book called The Protector, which was written by Larry Niven, and it seems that Psygnosis also licensed the artwork that was used on a number of other books as well, so it's an interesting thing to try and spot. I've decided to go in release order for these games, as I think it's a good way to show how the developers improved with time. So the next game is Xeriax. Which was developed by the WizKids in 1990 with software businesses handling the publishing. And this sounds more like a new drug than a shooter. But I have to say, this is all quite fancy. But this is far more in keeping with the genre than the last game, as we have waves of enemies that will drop power-up tokens, and it's a one-hit death. And as we'll see later, there's lots of enemies on the screen at once, all while running quite smoothly and looking really quite nice as well. It's not often you see this many sprites on the Amiga, not at this frame rate anyway. But behind this impressive looking game is a bit of a sordid history, as a buggy beta of the game was leaked by one of the testers, and this is the version that got copied and passed around, before the game got its supposed official release, a release that surprised the developers as they never actually finished the game, 
a combination of issues meant that the source for the game was lost during development, and the team figured, well, that was that, the game was dead. But the publishers released what they had gotten so far, and they never told them. This is all kinds of shady. But thankfully, a developer called Ross on the EAB forums took up the task to fix up the beta, and then released the Xeriax 100% Ultimate Edition, which makes it sound even more like a new super drug, that even the original developer showed up in the thread to thank them for their work. So how is the actual game? Well, it's hard. Not just I'm bad at it hard, but just about everyone calls it hard. As you might have noticed, there is a lot going on. And even with the upgrades, which uses a similar system to Nemesis or Gradius if you will, that you collect upgrade tokens, which will move you along a list, and then you can hit the spacebar to activate it. The upgrades range from having a few pods, to having a rear launcher, plus you have these bits that move around the craft, that will then fly off in their current direction when you let go of the fire button, so you can't just keep holding it down if you want to use those. All in all, it's a very impressive shooter for the time, just one that might be pitched a little bit too hard. But it's difficult to be harsh on the game, particularly when it technically was never finished. We've had a few ship-based shooters, so I think it's time to go back to nature, as we check out Apedia. That was developed by Keiko, and published by Playbite in 1992. This is one of the few games that we'll see today that has a story-based intro, that tells us about some evil wizard who decides to be a real dick to a couple and sends out a swarm of mutated insects to sting the poor wife. So what does our hero do? Well, he transforms himself into a bee to go off and find the antidote. The game itself, or at least the first level, is very European in its look, as it's easily the brightest and most colourful game we've seen so far. And as you might have guessed from turning into a bee, this is mostly a game about shooting other insects, with there being a mix of flying and walking ones, all of which are trying to kill you in some different way. And it doesn't take much to do that either, as this is a one hit and you're dead kind of game, but you do have a few things to help. It's the first game that we've seen that's had a charge shot. So hold down the fire button for a few seconds and let rip with a large flame powered stinger that will just fly through the smaller enemies and do large damage to the bigger ones. But this does mean you have to keep hitting the fire button to shoot, or use a joystick that has a switchable auto fire. There's also an upgrade system that works very much like the last game. You have to collect these little red and yellow flowers which will then move you across the selection bar at the bottom of the screen. Now depending on which mode you have it set to, the game will either auto pick your next upgrade as you reach it in the list, or you'll have to select it manually with a button press. I think the manual selection is best as it allows you to pick what type of firepower you want, as there's a few of them that you can upgrade if you continue to select it as you go along. But there's also one other thing that can help, as you can have a second player that will take control of a small drone, and they'll have their own health and lives, which I think is a really neat touch. There are multiple levels per world, and there's lots of mini bosses for you to fight as well. The worlds are also quite nice and varied, like the second world where parts of the level is actually underwater, and you're one of the few creatures that can move between the above and below the waterline, so there is quite a lot to this game for you to play. There's also a lot of enemy types with their own interesting designs, and you'll have to pay attention to the attacks as they can come from all directions, so it is a decent challenge.
and we move from one insect-based shooter to another, because it's time to feel the agony. Developed by Art and Magic in 1992, it was also published by Psygnosis. And this might be one of the more famous bits of music on the Amiga, or at least for the title screen anyway, as the in-game music Well, it's a little different. And as you might have noticed, you are playing as an owl. Which was the form you picked to try and complete the task that the Grand Wizard set to his apprentices, to see who would gain the cosmic power. So now you have to fight your way across the magic lands to win his favour. Which means having to shoot at quite the range of weird beasties in what is a very nice looking and animated level. And just how about the animation on that owl? That's just... wow. Though it does make avoiding the enemies just that little bit harder, as that's quite the hitbox to try and judge. I don't think it's the whole size of the bird including the wings, but at times it can feel like it. Your main weapon is, well, quite weedy to start with. Its only saving grace is that it can fire quite fast, but thankfully there are some limited, very limited upgrades sprinkled around the level, and if you miss them, then you have missed them. These come in a few flavours, there's ones that will increase the size of your firepower, and then there's ones that will give you swords. Now these act a little bit like a shield, as any creature that comes in contact with them will get damaged and typically will be taken out rather quickly. And you gain two of these, one above and below. And when you die, then these will get reduced down a level. So thankfully it's not quite as harsh as some games, but your weaponry will go down when you die. These are your main weapons in the game, but they're not your only ones. As if you're lucky you might be able to grab a scroll, and these contain spells, which you can trigger from the spell menu and with quite a lot of different ones for you to collect as well. But they will only last a short amount of time when you trigger them, so you have to do that at very careful times. Now typically you might think that would be when you're up against a boss, but even for me the bosses in this game aren't that hard. And if you've got a powered up owl, then normally you can find a nice place to sit and do a lot of damage while not taking any at all for yourself. We return to the realm of spaceships as we have a disposable hero. Developed by Boys Without Brains, or is it Euphoria, they use both names during the intro, it was published by Gremlin in 1993 for the original Amiga, and it got a CD32 edition in 1994, which marks the first game so far to have an AGA release. But don't be too hopeful that they did much, as this is largely a straight conversion, with some CD music. And I've been told the difficulty is a little bit easier. Both versions share a common intro. And before we leave the main menu, I like to point out that nice spinning 3D ship in the corner. It looks nothing like the craft will fly, but it's cool anyway. <laughs> And like the other games we've seen in this video, this is quite the looker. It might seem a little basic to start with, but after a screen or two we start to see lots of detailed and colourful enemies. And just look at that water effect. Completely unnecessary, but so needed at the same time. The enemies are quite the varied lot as well. Many will just show up, and then fly off. Others, like these turrets, will keep being a pain until you deal with them, or they're left long behind. 
and I really like this mech combo that splits up with the walker side of it just stomping off with the water splashing around his feet. Again, completely unnecessary effect, but just looks great. Your gun, while providing a nice stream of bullets, is a little limited in its range. But there's this whole upgrade system for you to interact with. First off, you have to collect these blueprint capsules, and then find a factory dome to land in. Once inside, you can then tweak your loadout, but this is quite limited by how much power you generate. Thankfully, one of the blueprints increases the amount of power your craft creates, but you might still need to remove weapons to bolt on different ones, because you have to try and remain within your power envelope. But just to make this a little bit harder, you can't use those blueprints right away. They take time to convert, which is all done in in-game time, not in factory time. But what is really quite useful is the fact that you don't lose your loadout when you die. But you do have to deal with the checkpoint system instead. Now it's been relatively even between the games that let you start from where you die and those that use checkpoints. And as you might expect from the genre, there are a few mini bosses, as well as some proper ones that you'll have to deal with at the end of each level. Now it's time to come on to the last main game that we're going to look at, T0. This was developed by Trauma Zero Team and published by PXL in 1999. So that puts it a good few years after the last game. It also puts this in the Amiga CD era of games, which means it's an AGA only title, which is a first for the video. This, as you might expect, results in lots and lots and lots of video that tells a pretty standard story about how aliens attack from another dimension and you have to try and defeat them. But what isn't standard is how in-depth this main menu is. You can tweak quite a lot of the settings here, and once you're happy with them, you can then go off to select which craft you want to use, which is a first for this video. But it's a shame it's a little slow in letting you switch between them. Secondary weapons, plasma, missiles, rear plasma, and but it does give you an overview of what each craft is like, including some audio as well. And this does give you a chance to be able to select a craft that suits your playing style, as there's larger ships with more firepower and smaller ones that can weave around the enemy. And once in game, we get a technically very impressive looking title. There's lots of detail going on in the background with some nice animations, and the enemies really do swarm onto the screen. But is it me, or does this all feel a little bit slow? Not like it's lagging or anything, it's just the gameplay feels quite slow. Because every so often it feels like it wants to go a bit faster, but then fails. The upgrade system is also unique for the games that we've looked at, as you can separately upgrade your primary and secondary weapons which is done via capsules that float around. The coloured ones will switch or upgrade your primary attack with guns, lasers and plasma weapons that all have their own levels of upgrades. And then there's the secondary attacks that have letters in the pickups. Now these are far more varied and tend to be limited by the ship that you've picked, which could be anything between rear attacks and homing missiles. But you also have smart bombs, and on top of all of that there's other pickups that you can collect as you go, that might make you invincible for a little while, or even downgrades that will reverse your controls for a short amount of time. So there is quite a lot of depth to this game, it's just a shame it doesn't feel all that great to play. 
it's technically a great game, but mechanically it just feels a little bit off and slow. But that could be just me. And before I wrap up this episode, I'd like to point out that people are still making horizontal shooters for the Amiga to this day, with ReShooter R being released just a few years ago. Now this is the demo as you can go out right now and buy the game on CD. And being a demo, it is limited to a single life, and so it's quite difficult, but it does look quite nice for an AGA game, even if the art style is a little bit more abstract than the other games that we've looked at. But it is a fun little title, and I'm sure the full game is meant to be even better from what I've read, so that's really cool. It's great that there's still new games being made for the Amiga, so it's not a surprise that shooters are one of the genres that keep coming back. Speed up. And there we have it, a range of shooters for the Amiga. Now seeing that there are quite a lot of them, it would have been almost impossible to cover all of them in a single video. That just means we're going to have to revisit this subject again at some point. So if you have a favourite that I didn't cover, or you think there's one that I should check out, let me know down in the comments. And until next time, I was the Gouldfish, that was a lot of pew 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 pew, and this was Gouldfish on Games. Thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you did, then you could let YouTube know by using the buttons down below, you know the ones I mean. Or you could check out some of the other videos that I've done that you can find on the screen right now. Or if you want to chat more, then join the Discord.